morning, everyone. Hello. How well, are you? Welcome to Warm and Cozy Quilting. Welcome. Are you guys awake? You have your coffee? I, I do. Mine. I, I got love. mine. Hey. Second cup. Oh, don't Please. spill it. Not on the quilt. We will get murdered. Right. Our boss will be very mad. Yes. It's really hot. <laughs> are you blowing off of the coffee? I am. <laughs> it's I so am. funny. Dramatic effect. Okay. Anyway. I'm Danielle. Hi, Danielle. This is Jason. I'm Jason. We have our camera person today is the beautiful Victoria. Victoria, she's helping us out today. Victoria, you saw her on the the Shaft Tech shop tour. Yeah. She is our create. What did I call her? Artistic designer in training. That's right. Or as she likes to refer to herself, the assistant to the <laughs> regional manager. Again, I hope that's not TM somewhere. <laughs> right. If it is, I'm sorry. Oh, they let me say it on the Shaft Tech. It was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they didn't censor um, that, so. Yeah. So, and you are the number one customers. Thanks for you watching are, us you this are. morning. Thanks for saying hello out there and everybody. Do you want to yeah. go back up and say hi to some folks? I would love to say hello. I've seen some people from not nearby. Nice. So, we got Miss LaDonna hanging out out there. Good, Good morning. morning. Hello, Carol. Hi. Hello, Donna. Oh, Carol. Does Carol know that she won? Carol, do you know that she won on Wednesday? You won on Wednesday. Okay. I mean, I've I assume you watch every message. Wednesday. I assumed you had Anyway, you won. Already. Okay, great. If you didn't know that, come by and see what you got. Hey. Right. Thanks for sharing. Uh, good morning, Donna. Number one support team. Is that you, I guess? You're pretty supportive out there in the world of quilting. Hmm. Hello, Debbie. And hello, Jackie from Indiana. Thank you morning. for sharing. Do we appreciate that? Hello, Wendy. Glad you made it here today. Yes. And good morning, Albina. Uh, good morning. Did you miss Wendy or was uh, no? They, she Wendy's said shared. No, she oh, said okay, shared, and I said good morning to shared okay. because. <laughs> All right. It's what good happens. Morning, Eileen. Hello, hello, Patty. Morning, Eula May. This is my excitement for Saturday. Look forward to Saturday. Well, oh, fantastic. my gosh! Thank you. I am so glad that we can bring you some happiness on these lovely Saturday mornings, uh, especially way out there in hot Arizona. Uh, we got here, Jackie saying. Love Saturday, first week back to school, and it was a success. Oh, good. Yes, yeah. Yeah, back to school. For we our had kids it was too. our first week back too, and I mean they were falling asleep early, so <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah. definitely wearing everybody out. Full days, everybody's ready to go. So much to do. So I mean, time. they get to eat lunch at school this year. Be crazy. That's kind of a big deal. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we're in Linda. Hello, Jackie, out in the West Coast. Hello, Mary. I see you on. Uh, Carol is aware that she won. Good. 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 Excellent. And good morning, Janice. Nice to see you on. Hello, Vicki. Nice to see you there, too. Hmm. Oh. This coffee's really hot. I waited too long to make my coffee. Now it's like super hot. and then Mine's perfect like because I always put ice in it. Oh. You want some ice? No, ma'am. <laughs> I'll good. find you some ice. I'm all right. We'll, uh, we'll deal with it. All right. So many of you are out there wondering, what are we going to talk about today? Are you excited? Are you excited? I'm kind of excited. So we had been, this whole year, we've been doing kind of like we did a, um, a sew along type thing, if you will. We made some blocks and we pieced that together. So kind of like the journey of a quilt. Right. So we are at the point now that we've selected a back. We've selected a backing. Batting. You said batting, back twice. Batting, backing. Huh. It's all the same. It all sounds the They're same They're all way. bees. You've got your spread <laughs> picked out and what you want to do. And then you're down to the quilting portion where you got to do some planning. Right. To figure out how you're going to quilt that. Good we'll morning, Heather, and hi to Cindy. Second. Hello, hello. Um, but we'll talk about those in a minute. There's a couple of things we do need to address. Ooh. That sounds serious. It did sound serious, but <laughs> I don't know. That's really, can't be. Just a couple of things. I was it more can't be. Jason said it. Jason's it can't involved. be that serious. It ain't that serious. So what you got? So there's some things that you want to talk about and let them know about. Right. Good regarding... morning, Regina. So we have classes. Yeah. Classes are back. I'm sorry to those who are out of town. We still have no real good way to include you. Um, we we'll haven't keep, given up we'll on keep it. Keep working on it because I I'm working on something where I'm going to teach the class, and it, we're hopeful that we can do both virtual and in person. So it's coming. Just hold yeah, on. keep watching. So, but for those of you who are close, because you know what, there are a lot of our friends who are close by. Yeah, some who've never even been in. Yeah, some who watch us once in a while. Mm -hmm. And so, I want to let you guys know that there's classes. Also, there's a lot of you out there who just started watching during the pandemic and just started picking up this hobby during the pandemic. Yes. So we have a beginning quilting class. So this beginning quilting class. 
starts with, it is six weeks long. Six weeks. Your classes are only two hours each time, so they're not, you know, super long, so that's good. But the first day, you pick out fabric, then you're going to cut fair. I mean, like, really talking about tools, talking about each step of the way, and uh, you quilt the quilt on your domestic machine, you bind it, you will go away with an absolutely finished product at the end. Um, so that starts September 11th. It's Saturdays. Now, I know that a lot of us have things going on, right? And now we're getting out, we're doing a few things, and Saturdays may be tough. Well, like I said, it's only two hours long, and hopefully you can fit that in. But if you have a conflict one weekend where you're not going to be able to make it, we can absolutely uh, work with you on that. So don't, you know, just talk with us and make sure, because what I don't want is you've got three or four conflicts, you know, I mean, that's not going to work out. But if we have uh, one or two that you have an issue with, we can have you stay after one day, come in early, schedule a different day with you, and we'll make it work out. So yep. really good for, for anybody who really wants to see how to make a quilt start to finish. It's taught by Debbie, my mom. And uh, Wendy's jumping on saying it's a great class. She took it last she year. She did take that. Well, so yeah. that it is fantastic. So it's a good way to learn more it's and a, on hands on. So you can watch these exactly. all day long. Yeah. But it, it's if you're not actually in. doing it, if somebody's not making you do it, you're not going to learn as well. Right. Or no, you'll learn, but you'll learn via bad habits that you create. Exactly. So it's nice to come in and actually have a class with somebody that's done this for years uh, and is going to yeah. teach you the tips and tricks of making your life easier in the quilting world. With that, there's mm -hmm. also that a binding class. class. There's a binding class going on. I believe it's also just a two-hour class. It might be. I believe it is. Um, yeah, I believe that's what that one is. Uh, so August twenty-sixth. It's from one. It starts at one o'clock. My uh, thing doesn't tell me here what time it's over, but I, I don't assume, think I need to show that. Yeah, but it's number. just a two-hour class. It does list it on the website. So when you go yes. to warmcozyquilting.com/classes, you can list see all the that. classes. It gives you all that information, start times, and what you need to buy, not buy, what the fee is for the class. All right. That stuff. Right. So uh, with the binding class, we've got several spots left. A lot of you will, you, you've already been making quilts and it's just that finishing right. that you really want to get better at. So we have a class for that. And Debbie teaches that one as well. Yes. All right. So then we have, there's lots of classes. There's that, a lot of I mean, classes. Like, I'm not going to read them all to ones. you. Okay. But they are filling up quick as they're coming available. So right. if you're interested in any of these we're telling you about these so you know to go sign up now. So please, if you, th this one uh, I think will fill up fast. Yes. And it's uh, coming pretty quickly. Which August 21st. Oh yeah, that's on the calendar there. It's like yeah. not this Saturday, it's next Saturday. So it's, it's a week from today. It's a week from today. Yeah. So August 21st, so next Saturday at 11 a.m. 11. I think... I don't know how long it is, but you can tell on the website. Uh, we have a peekaboo beauty bag class. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to tell you uh, what most of the time when you sign up for our classes, you will pay the class fee online. Then you come in and you pick out your fabric and that kind of thing. And so there's a, a, a separate charge there. Uh, this particular bag, the uh, peekaboo beauty bag, you are going to pay $55, and that is for everything. It's your class fee, it's all of your fabric, and uh, everything to make this little cute bag. So this is a new instructor. It is, it's three hours long. Yep. So 11 to 1. So then you go have lunch and, and make a day. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so this is a new instructor, and she has a big following on social media. Yeah, her YouTube channel um, is fantastic. Yeah. Her name's Lauren... Mormino. More, Mormino. I knew I was. I was. You, I saw you about ready right. to struggle with it, but it that's right. okay. Um, I don't even know if I was right. I just went with it. Yeah. If you're watching, Lauren, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Whether or not you watch us, I doubt that. But that's okay. Yes. If you are, well, I'm sorry. I, I don't, she might be hanging exactly. out out there. Chilling. So uh, a lot of people, I've had people sign up for the class who are like, oh my gosh, I've watched her videos and she's amazing. So um, anyway, she. If you re definitely read through the description of the class because you do need to call us and tell us which color of vinyl you want. 
and things like that. So make sure you check it out. But $55 does the whole thing. And you're going to walk out with a, a great project. Did you say that it's a vinyl working with thing? Yeah, working you're working with vinyl, with vinyl. not cotton so, this time. So yeah, you're going to get the class B. You're going to get the pattern so you can make a hundred more of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're going to get the uh, uh, fabric to make it. So mm -hmm. the vinyl, uh, I think there's a zipper maybe, and there's um, Everything in the kit there. a fat quarter or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, and so... That's really about the most you can tell them at this point without like walking them to the site and saying... Sign here, up. sign up here, right? But the again, only it's other limited on seating, so right. if you're interested in that. I just want to talk about one more. I know you that got you another didn't. one still. Just, just the following this Saturday. This is just a small spattering of classes we have. There's even more. The following Saturday, we also have a new instructor. Vella Herman is oh, teaching, yeah. and it's more of like a workshop. You have to go sign up. <laughs> Go to the website and sign up. I will. Okay. That means that's um, one less seat for you guys. So. If anybody has done the square and a square, or if you bought the square and a square ruler, and now you're like, I don't know what I'm, like, I don't understand, or this is a, like, this is going to be great for you. Yeah. You're not making a quilt. You're learning how to use the square and a square technique to make half square triangles, flying geese, uh, square and a square. Bar. Yes. It, Jody it, method. It's an amazing thing. And so we do have, I mean, that one is almost full. Yeah. So go on our website and sign up for that one. If you have questions about any classes, please give us a call. Um, we would love to help you with that. So. Yes. And yeah, thank Bella you, Bella. See, you Bella's can... watching. She's out there. We said her name right, but we love Bella. So thank you well, for doing yeah. that for us. Yeah. So I can attend. I'll probably hang out in the back like some weirdo or something. <laughs> You're going to have to pay your fee. You're going to have to sit in a chair, and you're going to have to be good. <laughs> I, well, now, you just crossed the line. I know, you I know. You just crossed the line. No, ma'am. All right, so those are some classes that are coming up. Again, if you're local, or you know anybody that's local, or you want to take a class with your friend, sign yourself and your friend up. Come take a class together. Yeah, I mean, um, we've got fantastic. long arm certification class. There's certification, we've got because we'll talk about that later. Here a little class. Bit. We've got so much. And a lot of those I didn't bring up in conversation because they're getting real close to full. Right. They don't need assistance in filling up because they're going to get full by themselves. So, anyway, excellent. Oh, Donna's coming to take, her and her sister are going to take the class with Bella. And good, good morning time. to Sarah. Oh, Hello. some other people jumped on. Oh, Robin, Robin's out there. Morning. morning, Robin. Good to see you. And Dorothy. And uh, Joe. Yeah. And, and Rita. Oh, it's Rita. She snuck in. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to set these on. Yeah, the just set the air. Let me see. That. Oh, you're going to put them mm -hmm, down nicely. Mm -hmm. I would have thrown them. That's how I do things. I know, I know. Okay. Okay, so all that you out of the way. You have it finished. Now what? Now what? Anybody know? I'll tell you what happens a lot of times. What's that? They get folded up and put in a drawer. That's what we have a lot of right a, now. Or into a bin. Yeah. And then. Forgotten. 20 years later. Or 40 years later. In the somebody sense, is going through grandma's bin and they're like, there's 12 quilt tops in here. And what do we do, do with these? them? What do you do? Right. You can't just throw them away. And well, it's you a lot. can, but please don't do that. It's a lot of work. Somebody put their time and effort and love and all that into the quilt. Now what do I do? I just didn't have the right direction. Well, here's some direction for you. Here we go. Here we go. Are you ready? All right. Uh, the first thing to think about really is really to plan this out. Uh, you have a quilt top. You do got to do some planning to make sure you do the right thing. Right. Uh, one of the easiest things that people have done for longest time it's just tie quilting. So that's where you take yarn and mm -hmm. or a heavy cord of some sort and you tie a knot. Mm -hmm. I don't so know. So you're how going to, do to it, have your, your batting, your backing, and your top your all quilt together. Witch. Your quilt witch. TM. That's mine. <laughs> okay. You can't have it. Quilt witch. Wow, where did that come from? I don't and know. Then... I actually have it here in print even. See, nice. somewhere in here. I don't know. So it's gonna be dated and time yeah. stamped and uh -huh. nobody can steal it from you. It's okay. mine now. So Hashtag quilt witch. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else probably has already come. No, maybe not. Maybe. Oh. Anyway, the one thing you do have to know if you're going to tie your quilt is really about your batting. Right. Your batting is going to specify how closely you need to stitch for your batting to not shift. Because as it gets laundered and cared for and loved over time and time again, your batting can start to shift in there. So... It needs to be stitched. Most of them say five to ten inches. It 
depends on the type of batting. So a lot of times, like I need stitching for me, the best way for me to get it is like the width of my hand. If I lay my hand down and I'm touching stitching on either side, then that's, that is always going to be enough quilting. Yeah. Um, is it as much as I want? Probably not. I like heavier quilting, but, uh, if you're tying it, you know, you want to be able to see, okay, for this particular quilt, maybe it's every square needs in the corner or something like that. Or maybe in the middle of each one needs a tie. So then with those, you use a heavier needle that you can get yarn through and you go through all the layers and you pull that yarn up and you can tie it to the front or you can tie it to the back. I've seen it done both ways. You can then, I guess you could probably even bury those ends if you wanted to after yeah, you it's tied could. you could bury you would still have that little knot Not there yeah but um so this preference. is an absolutely fine way yes. of quilting because first of all you've put all this time into this let's use it let's find a way to get it finished right so that it can be used and and so the let's do whatever you can do so if that's the only way that you can quilt uh, that's still a perfectly fine method. Absolutely. And they last for years if they're tied correctly and you use right. a, a decent cor cordage or something to pull, pull that Yarn knot. is, I mean, yarn it's, is generally what is used. And so, right. and so I would find a color of yarn that's going to work nicely with it so that it doesn't matter that you're seeing that. I'm only saying cordage because so uh, we had our customer, uh, Miss Sandra, that came in, took the long arm surf class uh -huh. with us. Uh, she was telling me how she had a quilt that I believe she said her grandmother had tied quilted. Mm -hmm. So years and years and years and years ago, and still in perfectly fine shape, the knots are holding up just fine. So right. but she had used a cord of sort, a little heavier thread, not yarn. So, and she was like, she had told me that she would recommend a cord as opposed to a yarn. Again, I think it's a personal preference. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Just as long and as it's quality, it'll hold up. Exactly. Yep. Okay, so, so you can tie a quilt. Now, what's the downside to tying a quilt? Um, for me, it's not real flattering. Yeah, okay, so we're we're long-arm quilters, right? So we like seeing a design and the quilting. Right. You know, the one thing is you've put all this work into the top. You don't want the quilting. To t Some people don't want the quilting to take over that, Most right? Most of the time you don't, right. You want your quilt top, the mm -hmm. piece part of it, to really do the talking. So if I quilt with a bright thread and it stands out more than the fabric does that's right. not that's not what I'm looking for so I want to be simple and I want to just tie so that um you Makes know so sense. that that could be but like for us we're we are looking for the quilting you know like what's right how can we how can we enhance the how quilt do you enhance that block and make it stand out like with did. the quilting rather than just uh the quilting take over right um so other than that, I mean, I'm sure there's really not a lot of negatives to it. It's quick, it's easy, it's efficient. Method works well. So mm -hmm. beyond that one, then you get into quilting as it is that most of us know it as. Right. Let me see here. Let me just make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Da, 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 da. Okay, moving on. I got some distance with that one. Okay, so when it comes to other quiltings, there's three main concepts. Mm -hmm. You've got your hand quilting. Right. You've got your machine quilting. Mm-hmm. And then you've got your quilting by check. Yes. Uh, yes. You can pay someone else to do it. <laughs> you can it, pay somebody right? else to do it. Absolutely. So, yeah. And, of course, within each one, there's different things. Like with hand quilting, maybe it's you're doing it on your lap or you have a big frame. With the machine quilting, you could do it on your domestic or you can have a long arm. We're going to go into all that. But Yes. Um, or you can quilt by check and then... Send it up. So I always tell people do the part you like. Right. It is to me very important to learn the whole uh way. Right, the whole process. The whole process. So that then you can decide, I really do like piecing and I really don't like quilting. Or like Jason, who likes quilting and not so much the piecing. So um, or some people love the design aspect. They love to pick out the fabric. They love to Pick out the pattern. This is Victoria smiling in the back going, yep, that's, that's me. That's her. I want the pattern. I want to really decide how I'm going to lay it all out. And then, so she does that. Then she piece, then I piece it. And then he quilts it. <laughs> right. And I mean, you have to have, you all have that full process. 
But then the you also need somebody to bind. So you have to know all those things. You're going to have to know all that because if you piece it and you take it to a long armor and you don't really understand how the long arm process works, you may be creating headaches for your long armor. So mm -hmm. learn how it works. That way you can make their life easier and then they like to see you come back and they do the best job humanly possible for you every time. Right. So uh, buy check, which means find a long armor. If you don't have one, we do the long arm for hire. We do mm -hmm. quilt for hire. Yep. Uh, you can fill out an intake form on our website underneath the uh, quilting information side. And then you can mail it to us. We'll mail it back to you. Yep. Uh, we do keep about a three month turnaround though, because well, that's about three months. It's just, it's never really gone down and we fight and fight and try and it just doesn't work. Cause there's a lot of people that want their quilts quilted by check. Right. Uh, yes. So you can send us everything you have. I don't personally think it's a good idea to send batting because you're going, you're paying shipping, right? Right. So we have batting on the roll. Mm -hmm. We have all different kinds of batting. So we are definitely going to be able to help you with that. And you don't need to pay the shipping on batting. No, um, take care of that. But if you already have it, we totally understand. And that's fine. Yep. Um, you can ship it all to us. Uh, we've also had some people who want like a flannel in, mm -hmm. instead of yeah. for their batting or, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. if, if you have a specific thing that maybe we don't have, you can absolutely do that. But yes, you can mail us your quilts. We will be your quilter, even if you live on the other side of the country. Doesn't matter. It's cool. We don't care. And uh, when it's finished, it, the whole process is very easy. Don't worry about that. Um, we do contact you and then we figure out if you want insurance on it because some, you know, some people are like, yeah, but shipping that thing back, oh my gosh, it makes me very nervous. I totally get that. Um, so, but we, we work it all out. I promise. Right. <laughs> the only thing we really require of you is you have to be, kind of come up with an idea for a thread color. And this is even if you bring in your quilt top. Uh, have an idea of thread color that you're looking for for your quilting. If you don't know, we have a wonderful array of colors to choose from. Mm -hmm. um, and an idea of what pattern you'd like to see. So we do have some customers that just do not like floral print or floral designs. So when they come in, we know we're aiming more for the geometric or a feather, perhaps. Uh, just kind of have an idea of what you're looking for, but don't be hard set on it. Because remember, you're working with somebody else's skill set. So you may, I want exactly this. They may not have exactly that. So right. just be mindful of that. Yeah. And so on our site, we do have several quilt designs, but we do not have all of them. We have a couple thousand. Probably somewhere close to that. 2,000. It's absurd. 2,500. I don't know. It's an and absurd number And if of I designs. don't have something, if you ask for something that I don't have, because here's the thing. We have sombreros. <laughs> we have chihuahuas. We I do. Mean, Why? Like we have know. so much stuff that most I of the time. I think we have 18-wheelers. Yeah, that most was something of the that's time been acquired. when you when you ask for something, we have it. If we don't, there are sites out there where we can purchase it. We also have a um, design program where we can design our own patterns. So sometimes we use that. So anyway, um, we are glad to help. If you want to quilt by check, keep that in mind. Okay, so the uh, second conversation was by hand. So mm -hmm. if you're going to quilt by hand, you kind of just have to know what you're doing or make real quick friends with some people that do. Right. So your local uh, church guilds tend to have the, the, the hand quilting skill sets. Yeah, some do. Um, some don't. Some don't. Uh, just may have to search around your area to find some people that do that. Unfortunately, we don't teach that skill set here right. because I don't have the oh. patience for that myself. Good morning, Debbie. Hello. So... It is fantastic because it is very a, much a timeless look. Mm -hmm. uh, it is amazing when it's done because, as you were saying earlier, the stitches are exactly what they should be because you're we're making placing them. it exactly where it should be. I don't know. Versus the machine going in, you go, whoa, hold oh, on. You weren't supposed to go there. <laughs> you're going to put every stitch in yourself. And so you're, they will be meticulously placed. Correct. Now, if you've never hand quilted before, you may have long stitches, short stitches, long, you know. So right. I have, uh, I just can't imagine that I would be very good at it because I need um, to see progress quickly. Or is that I'm you not. just talking yourself out of it, though? Or is it? Could be. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't given it a shot. I've never tried I really it. I, try. There's a part of me that thinks I should try. Right. 
Uh, I'm kind of scared of it now. <laughs> I love my long arms. I don't want to give them up. I'm attached to them. See? <laughs> oh, it is long. <laughs> Ellen, that's me. I don't have the patience to hand cool. Yes, high five. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, sometimes. I mean, he doesn't have the patience to piece. I don't have the, like, so large pieces I can deal with because if they go together get the quilt and done. done in a couple hours, forget it. If they're a little bit, ah, uh, they're frustrating and I don't do so well. So, anywho, uh, so that's by hand. Again, that requires uh, a lot of planning. A yes. lot of time You're gonna learning mark your skill. Quilt. You're going to... Right. And we got tools that we'll talk about for that mm -hmm. because that's going to be something you can do with any of the machine quilting stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of planning goes into that one for sure. Okay. Um, oh, nice. Okay. So Sandy said that she tried it. She didn't like it. Okay. Uh, we have Dolores said that she hand quilts and has nice. a long arm too. That is so, awesome. That is depending on what you're going to do... Maybe depending on the quilt. Okay, a quilt that's full of batiks, I'm probably not hand quilting because that's going to be harder to get your needle through. I would think. Okay, so then we got more people. Oh, awesome. Part of a ladies group at my church that does hand, hand quilting. quilting. All right. They would accept oh. any top to quilt for anyone. So, yeah, Absolutely. if you have a top you finish, and that's, thank you so much, Aletha, for saying that. There's a lot of uh, groups that will take quilt tops to hand quilt. Um just check with your local church groups and find For out, sure. you know, who's got the availability. And there's there... obviously a time frame, a backlog that you probably oh, contend yeah. with. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. It's not quick. But right. Absolutely. Heather loves her machine. Yes. And. Good morning, Peggy. Peggy hand quilts, but she took your class and yes. she's going to rent the machine. You're so gonna that's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. Sister hand makes her quilts from start to finish. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. And I would say that probably the biggest part to hand quilting is that you can say you did it all yourself from start yep. to finish. Uh, you didn't involve a machine in the process, what have you. So right. it is it is a skill set I wish I could learn, but I know myself and I know that I could learn it to understand it, but I don't think I'd ever complete a project. But I know this about myself. Right. So, but regardless, okay. when we're talking both hand quilting and machine quilting, you really have to plan right. your quilting. Absolutely. So, continuing with that thought, we're going to go on to the machine side of it. So, Carol does both. We do know that Carol does she both, and she does a great job at with her both. church, and she has a long arm at home. So yes. she, and I'm sure then there is a. Sometimes you're like, "Yep, this one's getting hand quilted. Yep, this, <laughs> this one's, one's going, going on, on the, the machine. machine." You know, so that was fun, but machine it is. Uh, so, when it comes to machines, you can do a couple different things. You right. can use your domestic, mm -hmm. which you've done or seen done and I've seen yes. done. I've never done myself um, or you can use a long arm mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to have a long arm so with your domestic you can quilt using that right correct so you can there's a couple different ways so if you have a straight stitch only machine mm -hmm. what's that mean that means it just does a straight stitch okay so it doesn't have the cool fancy it doesn't have zigzag, zigzag or anything, or anything okay right mm -hmm. um a lot of times well, I, I shouldn't say a lot of times because I don't know a lot about straight stitch only machines other than the ones that I have encountered did not have a way to drop your feed dogs. And those are the things that are underneath the needle right. plate that kind of help. Yeah, move your feed your dogs are going to. So if you want, so your feed dogs are going to keep your fabric moving in one direction from front to back. That's right. it. That's all it's going to do. Um, but if, so if you want to go sideways, you can't do that because the feed dogs are going to try, are going to be working against you. Right. So. A lot of machines do have an option to where you can drop your feed dogs, which means those no longer are happening. And now you are the feed dogs, right? You are feeding okay. the machine through, or the, the you are feeding through. the fabric through the machine right. in whichever direction you want. So, uh, there, um, so, so would you need a different foot to do that? Yes. Um, there's, there's a quilting foot there that you're going to want to have mostly because sometimes your fabric at that point is going to be three layers, right? Or right. you're going to There's have to more it. layers. You're, you're, go, you're going to want, yeah, you're going to want your fabric to be able to move underneath mm -hmm. that. And your foot generally is further down. Right. Because it's, it's touching the fabric and feeding through that way. So you do have, and there's also like a ruler foot you can use if you're going to use rulers on your domestic machine. What about machine. walking feet? Are so those you, different than what you've been talking about so, so far? So a walking foot really is the same as having feed dogs now on top and on bottom. Okay. So you're getting what is called, e so sometimes they're called walking feet, sometimes they're called even feed. 
So okay. that's because you're getting even feed from the top and the bottom as you put your quilt witch. TM, say TM. Oh, TM. <laughs> Sorry. Not as you put enough. your quilt witch through, you're going to have... So if you wanted to quilt straight lines... Oh, so that would be really ideal for that then. That when you have that nice even feed, then and get mm -hmm. a nice straight line. Yeah, you can you can do that with. So you still have your feed dogs up. You've got a walking foot on. You've got all three layers, and you're going through, and it's nice and straight. If you're gonna just stitch in the ditch, and you can kind of hit the ditch without a ruler. Oh, you yeah. know, then you could do that with your walking foot or your your, uh, and and still have the feed dogs engaged. So sometimes that is a little bit um, more appealing to people who are like, I, I, I do not know how fast or right. slow or whatever that I'm supposed to move this. Um, I did that a lot with rag quilts. That's really mm -hmm. been the only way that I've ever done a rag quilt is with my feed dogs on and straight line, uh, straight line making a cross, on, you know, from corner to corner both ways and then attaching all the blocks together. So Gotcha. Uh, okay, well that's cool. Yeah. So you can do it on your domestic. Domestic. Mm -hmm. but, but, but. Which is easy to say. <laughs> so much easier to say than I'm presenting it as you. Okay, uh, let's see, what else did I have here for information? That's great. Oh, so with the long arms. Because mm -hmm. the, the downside of quilting on your domestic, really the biggest problem is your throat space. Mm -hmm. Because you have like this much. Right. And you have this queen size quilt. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm off the screen because they're huge. And right. you want to quilt this, and you're wrestling with this thing right. the whole way. So, yeah, I, I don't think that we really talked about, you know, when you are stitching on your domestic, you need to start, you have to baste everything really well, which we're right. going to talk about another, another day. day. Um, you need to start from the center and work your way out. That way you don't get any puckers. So you really no. have to not only plan how you're going to quilt it, but really plan your uh, path if you mm -hmm. will. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to do this. And, you know, you're not limited by a throat or by a, um, I got to wind it up on a long arms throat. But, you know, you can keep going, right. but you really need to kind of plan it so that you have a uh, nice, evenly quilted as you go out so that you're not getting any puckers. You really could easily get a pucker on the back and puckers happen and it's not that serious, but you know, if you're trying to do this and you've done a really good job, you really want to now take it and do something for a show. And so you you feel that you've worked to this and now you get a pucker on the back of this quilt that you wanted to put in a show and you're disappointed. You know, I mean, I understand all the the possibilities of being disappointed and I don't want you to have those. So, right. Um, you know, working from the center out. Anyway, so you have a lot. There is some downside. And yeah, you only have this throat space. So you're kind of rolling this whole right. quilt this witch whole up so, can, so that you can get it through that little bitty th uh, throat, throat space, space yeah. and trying to and then trying to move the fabric just the way you want it to get the design. Right. It's not easy, but it can be done. Right. So your other alternative to that is having a long arm or renting time on a long arm, which we do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. take the course Four yep. hour course, I kind of give you some rough ideas on what you can quilt free motion quilting, how to load it on the frame, all that stuff. It helps. So, anyway, so you have this quilt, you want to do something with it, you can take it to the long arm, and then you have however much throat space there, which is so much easier to work with, especially if it's on a frame. You're not right. wrestling with basting, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you're like, you're like, okay, great, I know I can hand quilt, you know, I, I know I can use a machine, I can use a long arm, but what? What am I going to quilt, Jason? Right. Stop yelling at me. It's Saturday morning, guys. <laughs> All right. So here's what we're going to do. Those are your basic ideas to quilt. Now we're going to talk about ideas on what you can put on your quilt. I'm going to scoot this here. I'm going to move this here. So let's talk. Okay. All right. So as you said, there's straight lines, mm -hmm. which you can do straight lines on any machine or handing quilting or any of the above. They're simple, they're basic, straight lines work really well. Again, keeping in mind distance for your batting, right? Right. So knowing that you need to stitch so much every inch or whatever, you know, you need to have a stitch every so many inches, mm -hmm. you want to make sure and follow that. Correct. Um, but another thing you want to do is, if, is make sure that you are 
um, evenly quilting the whole thing. So if you are going to do a very dense quilting, you need to do very dense at the top, at the middle, at the next part, and at the bottom, okay? Like it needs to be dense the whole way um, and all the way across, okay? So not just, and yes, you can have some highs and lows. That's not what I'm saying, but like, if so you- So I have a quilt in the shop that if you come in, I will show it to you. It's one I pieced. It's a design that I created that I put on the quilt, but I have these large sections of unquilted and, the and a lot of sections that are like very there's, densely quilted. There's 10 points that are coming in right here. Okay? Yeah. And then it goes out. And as it goes out, then there's big wide gaps that aren't quilted. Right? So the quilt lays like this, like a country road. It's atrocious. Um, and I haven't corrected it. I'm not going to because it's a nice reminder of why you should always consistently stitch, regardless of what you're stitching on your quilt. Don't leave giant open gaps or super dense here and there. So mm -hmm. mindful. Right. Um, uh, so you want to think about those things. So if you're going, so free motion quilting is really by moving the fabric or, or the machine without uh, a computer, right? Mm -hmm. So, but that can be using a ruler. You can be following a line. Mm -hmm. You can be quilting on, we have uh, on our long arms a from the back system where you're following a pantograph and you're actually standing at the back side of the machine. So not on top of your quilt, you're standing behind it and the machine is quilting over here, but you're able to follow a path and get consistent stitching throughout. Right, you get so, the idea of the design you're looking for without thinking, what am I gonna do? Right. Now, if you're gonna have something that has a lot of points and it's squares and very sharp angular, I would say aim for something that's more curved more, to kind of mm -hmm. offset with that. Yeah, things that are more round or softer edges. What you don't necessarily want is to put more square, more straight lines and squares on this because sometimes if they don't land exactly with the pattern itself, it, they may look competing. Right. And it just kind of throws off that design. Absolutely, you can put uh, straight lines on this. Actually, this quilt is a good example of that, being that it squares, but then the lines that we have on it i know you can't see from there but even though they are they straight of. lines they are angled so right. i have these are straight and my quilt thing is more angular correct so you can still use a geometric design just know that you know i wouldn't want to put something that is supposed to look straight and my block that i thought i pieced straight really is kind of a little bit goofy you know and now you can clearly see right you know you're going to kind of <laughs> accentuate any of those mistakes you don't really want right, to do it. right exactly. so putting something that's got curves to it or you know feathers are wonderful for that so um so some tools Should we, is that what i'm jumping into now some different um, yeah. tools well, i just wanted to with the pantograph just kind of clean that up mm -hmm, that's sure. what we were talking about was edge to edge so if you're going to just do a stipple all over your quilt again on your domestic on a long arm whatever just nice all the way across, consistent, even stitching. Mm -hmm. Don't get too tight here and too loose there. So that's edge to edge stuff. Right. Okay. So now you want to do something custom or you need other ideas on how to make this work. Well, I want to just talk, let's go back just for a second, even for an saying, all over. Actually, before we go too much farther, I think we need, to, do we need to bring them into this conversation sure. yet? Or I is this, know. I don't know. Where are we going to go with this? What's this? Well, so let's say you've decided that oh, you want to do an edge to edge across this. here. Yeah. You can practice that. So we have this quilters preview paper and it's a roll of paper that you can see through. Show them how they can see through it. See, watch, watch, here I go. No, I'm still here. <laughs> So, and it has nice lines on it that you can, you know, you can clearly see, like, don't go past those so you're not drawing onto your quilt. Right. Um, and I've heard uh, some people say it's probably better to take some blue painter's tape and run across the edge of that so that you really see that and you mm -hmm. get that resistance you, of the tape yeah. so you don't draw onto your quilt. Also, another good idea is if your throat space is only eight inches, maybe you m measure that and mark so that you know, okay, this much I can get in the throat space. But then you can then decide, okay, I want to do loops and curls and I want to practice and I want to see what that's going to look like on my quilt. 
you get a dry erase marker, you do your loops and curls. I know that you can't see that from Just there. Just imagine but, that you can see it. Uh, and you can erase this pretty easily um, if you don't like something. This is also going to be good if you decided you want a custom quilt and you want to do some different things, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But just for good, like getting consistent with your with your whatever stipple, loops and curls, whatever you're going to do, it's kind of nice to have the quilt there and be able to go, yeah, I really think I need to do that tighter and I, I should get some practice with it. I want my... my Density, my density a little bit tighter. Well, the best thing that you can do when you're going to start working with free motion quilting, long arm domestic, doesn't matter, is to practice it by doodling. Doodle, so doodle, doodle. I have been practicing myself on feathers. I am still terrible at them, but I'm better now than I was a couple months ago when I started practicing with them. What? The well, why is, do you practice? Because I want them to look better. I want them to look right. But what the heck is doodling is not going to help me. It gives you the muscle memory. Right. Thank you for that leading question. That was well done. Mm -hmm. I wasn't paying attention enough. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you need to build the muscle memory. Yeah. And the best way to do that is to practice and to doodle um, because you now you've got this big machine and you're a little bit apprehensive because you've never used one before. And so you've already got all of those things going on and this is this quilt that you've worked so hard on. And so you're a little bit tense. And if you have the muscle memory already, this is going to make it very much easier. That, that's great in English. Anyway. I, I, yes, it's, I don't know. We're going to go with it. Okay. It's going to be helpful <laughs> for class. moving that machine around and getting the design that you want. Right. Okay? So preview paper. Preview paper is pretty awesome. That is pretty great for everything. You, I, I never really thought of it from the edge to edge side, but yeah, absolutely. If you're going to, if you're going to do something with it before you go to your machine, any, whatever machine it is, it's a really good idea to kind of get a feel for, you know, if I'm going to make this loop here, I want to be able to make sure I go this far and make mm -hmm. sure my loops are this size. Exactly. Have that feel for it. It's also very good with custom work, which is what we're going to talk about next. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's lots of design ideas and all kinds of books. So many books out there. So this particular book shows square, like, so let's say you've got a turn dash block. Oh. Or, yeah. okay, that's got a drunkard's path. It will show you... Ooh, it's got ideas all over it. Yeah, so it takes that same churn dash block and it quilt. It shows you how to quilt it Can in multiple it? ways. I'm going to look at this. Okay. Hold on. So hold on, hold on. So do we have a... Does it tell you where they're, what blocks they are anywhere in here? I don't know. I was hoping that there was going to be like a card trick one in here and then you could be like, oh my gosh, we have card trick right in front of us. Anyway, it doesn't. Yeah, that was good thinking. Look at that. Can they even see it? No, no. you want to okay. see... So this is Amanda Murphy. Mm -hmm. uh, who is Amanda Murphy? Do we know who she is? Other than the person that writes these books and does an amazing job she, with these She's things? a great free motion quilter. So that one is the more about... Quilting ideas, free motion. So it ha it's really custom stuff. So blocks, yeah. border, sashing. Okay. okay. This one has ruler work Ooh. ideas. And, and some of it, okay, like this, even on the front, it's showing leaves. Well... She wasn't using the ruler to make leaves. She was using the ruler to make the area where she was going to then put the leaves. Like, oh, okay. Or, or if you think about feathers and you need a stint, or you need a, a spine, right? Mm -hmm. You get your spine in there, and you can use a ruler to make the spine. And then when you go back and make that feather, it, it's going to be more consistent to the next one. Right. So this takes uh, rulers and uses them and show, shows you some good ideas using rulers. Because even, I don't know if you can see, can they see this? Yes. I okay. Think. So here you've used a ruler, then you've gone the next step and you've added pebbles and all kinds of design within that. Can they see that, Victoria? I'm going to get up. Uh-oh, she's getting up. Oh no, she's leaving the shot. No, she's coming to the camera. Hello. So here is using the ruler and making the flower and then taking that design and going, okay, in here I'm going to do this little uh, figure eight. And back here I'm going to do some pebbles. So taking that to the next level and then what does it look like on the quilt? Hmm. Okay, I, I know that that's not a great shot. It's okay. That's all right. You get the gist of it. And there are these resources available to you. So you don't have to go into this completely blind. The next one is... Ooh, organic. Yes. So organic free motion. 
arms. Right. So really tips for long arms and domestic machines for sashing, borders, motifs, all over designs. This does more all overs than the rest. And it even has like, if you're going to put things in a triangle. Um, I love this book. This is her newest and um, we have a bunch of those in stock. Some of these others I don't have very many, but hmm, the very rulers cool. are, anyway. Okay. All right. So then there's also, I just got this one is another one for beginning quilting, machine quilting on your domestic oh. or how, however you machine quilt. Um, but it even shows you like there's little, is there a travel path on there? There's a travel path. Oh it my shows goodness. you the stitch path, you know, so, okay. So come up and around and then do this. So it kind of is uh, very helpful as far, but some of these are oh. kind of basic. That's okay. That's out there, what, who out there is a professional lawyer, That's what we really. need to you, start, right? Got to start somewhere. Shoot, you know what you could do? What's that? You could lay oh, your preview paper you could. in your book, and you could follow that stitch path. Doodle, 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 doodle. And you could practice. Look at that. Okay. How fantastic is that? So this is one of the Annie's quilting. So they're... It's only $14.99 for this book, so that's pretty cool. That's a pretty good deal. I mean, it's got a lot of stuff in here. Okay. So anyway. Okay. So we've got so there's those. the books you can use. Mm -hmm. um, to get some ideas. You Go also have, to the internet. Look at what other people are quilting. Think about, huh, how did they do that? You know, and start trying to practice on your own. So when we're talking preview paper and rulers, so mm. make sure you use a ruler foot with whatever machine you're quilting with if you're going to use rulers. Right. Most if you have a low shank or a high shank, you need to know low shank, high shank, and have the correct one. Because you do not, do not want to connect your needle with your ruler. Mm -hmm. They are not friends. So you're, you're going to break your needle. Yes. You could break your ruler. And throw and your machine out all are, time. are not cheap because, you know, $30 or something at least for a ruler. Um, but... Because you're like, oh, needles are cheap, but they're not when you break because what happens is then it was going down. It's telling the machine to do this certain thing, and now you've, you've got it out of sync, so it's out of time. Mm -hmm. And guess what happens then? You're going to the repair shop. More money. Uh, so, and if that's your only it. machine, uh, uh, now you're I'm in mad. trouble. Now so I'm mad. Don't chance rulers. Use them mm -hmm. wisely. Yeah. But so, say you have a ruler. But you want to see what you can do with it on your quilt before you take it to your machine. You can take your ruler and you can take these lovely little things here, which are stitching line discs, especially if you have a long arm. You can put your ruler on your quilt, on your preview paper, and take these little thing here and you can follow around that to get that quarter inch yeah, feel of your because ruler Because your needle is not going to go to this foot. It's going to be a quarter inch away, right? Right. So you need to see, okay, if I follow that around, how big of a clamshell is that going to make? Because in your mind's eye, you're thinking it's this big, when really it's this big. And and does that make a difference? Yes. Should I use the other side? And you're So again, we're planning, right? We're making planning, the decisions planning, about what planning. we're going to do. Absolutely. So rulers are great, especially with preview paper. Let's say mm -hmm. you don't have preview paper. Mm -hmm. Say you have an amazing skill to draw your own stuff. You There's, can make your very own stencil. You can make your own stencil because stencils are yeah. great when you combine a stencil with what is known as pounce powder, mm -hmm. which is like a talcum powder type material. Yes. And that is iron off. Okay. So, you know, some of it's going to brush off, but some of it will still be there. And when you hit it with an iron, it's gone. It's gone. So you'll lay that across your quilt and you'll just run the pounce powder across there, lift up your stencil, and then you have... What you want to do. Right. But this, say you can draw your own feather. Mm -hmm. Or say you find an image that you love. That you want to put in the block every time. And you want it to be consistently similar. Because <laughs> that's always what you want to do, be consistently similar. Similar? Similar. Anyway. Similar? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, you put that on here. And then you use your domestic to stitch around those lines to follow With the trace no out. With no thread. No so thread. You take your thread poking out. Holes. Poking holes. And then you take and your pounce the and, and look and at I, that. Yeah. Anyway, so that's fun stuff too. Um, but, you know, so, and yeah, the pounce you just run across there and then it leaves that mark. And now you have something to follow. Like, this is a great way for me 
to free motion quilt because I can't just go with a blank canvas and make it happen. Right. Um, I would prefer to have some line to follow. Um, unless it is just straight lines. And even if it's straight lines, if I have to go diagonally and I want every line to be at a 60 degree angle compared to this, shoot, I'm not going to be able to hit nope. that every time. I need to draw those out. Yep. And there are crosshatch stencils. There's all kinds There's of cool stencils, stencils in this world. All kinds of stuff. So, uh, pounce, that's what you would use here. Otherwise, um, Final you resorts, can... Resorts, you come down to drawing it onto your quilt. Draw it on there, right? So and there's a couple different line. things here. So there are these uh, pencils from Handy Quilter. These are iron off. There's four in a pack, and they are uh, kind of like a waxy mm -hmm. material, almost like a crayon, I guess you would say. Yep. Um, they, I actually I've like seen them, them kind of like almost like a grease pen, but not right. grease. Right. 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 But. Right. Right. Yeah. You don't want to think about grease in your quilt. I can't even imagine. Anyway. Horrifying. Um, yes. But you, they like pull, you pull off the paper to sharpen it and that kind of thing. So um, there are people that this is all they ever use. And they love these and they were hard to get for a long time. And now Handy Quilter makes them. And so it's wonderful. So we have them. Um, there is chalk that's in like a, I want to say pencil, but this is uh, more like a marker size mm -hmm. um, full of chalk dust, and it's but it's going to come out in a nice straight line because there's like a a roller on the end of it. Yes. So it, it, uh, the one thing you don't want to do with any marking is mark your entire quilt if it's going onto a long arm because as you roll it up. You could lose some of that, or the markings could transfer to a different place. You I can't think with that, you float your quilt. Be aware There's of some... what you're using for marking at that point. And right. Do with what's appropriate. You know, if yeah. it's something you're going to be doing, you know, you're not rolling it up and losing that dust. You're not rubbing against it. Chalk might work if it's going to be you're going to work I mean, in this little area, maybe. But even the pounce will bounce mm -hmm. off, if you will. Right. So. Uh, you know, doing a block at a time, marking a block at a time is good. Marking your border and doing that and, you know, um, is good. There, We also have air erase and water erase marking pens. I love the sew line ones. Uh, they just tend to work really nicely on most fabrics. I yes. did have a I did test it yesterday on black because we had a customer who was working with black and nothing was showing up and these did not show up. You really need white, either white chalk, chalk liner, or like these are white pencils. So sometimes I'm sure this isn't going to show up on this white very well. You're Probably gonna, not. Those are the things you're going to run into. Um, now, air erase, I'm trying to remember how this works. So the air erase actually comes off if it gets, uh, as it, so I used to think as it dries, but it's more like as it gets wet from the humidity right. in the air, okay, it goes away. So we live in a fairly humid client, climate. Being I could get to the next row. Disorder. I could get the, to the next row and my markings aren't there anymore. Right. So uh, where also if you are in Texas um, or let's say Arizona. Arizona, the air is very dry, yeah. right? These marks might stay on there for a few days, and now you're going, oh, is this ever going to go away? This, yeah. Because it is like a bluish purple mark, and so it's like, that could be a little bit concerning. But really, you get it wet, and it's gone. Right. So, um, okay. I use it a lot for, also when piecing, mm -hmm. you know, making half triangles, difference. all that stuff. Okay. Okay, so, uh, hello, Jenny. Thanks for saying hello to us. Thank you guys for sharing that are out there. Cassie, yes, pounce, as in a cat, cat pouncing on something. That is what it's called. Uh, if you need to see some, we got some in store. You can come by and yes. we'll show you what it's all so about. So people would uh, think that they had to pounce like this on here. It's you, just a name. You pounce the, the <laughs> it, it really is like an eraser, like from, you know, school. school. Yeah. Uh, that's what it looks like. And you pounce one time in the container, container and then it puts the chalk into that. And then you rub it across there, and it puts the chalk onto your surface. So then you move this away. This is going to have a bunch of dust on it. And also the markings on your <laughs> ruler, or on your quilt. 
I would get in trouble <laughs> for having done such a thing. Well, you know. But anyway, so yeah, so that's pretty much, you know, it doesn't tell you exactly what to quilt, but it does kind of let you guys see that you do have to plan and have an idea of where you want to go and what you want to do, but there are options. And if you don't understand them, you can always come by and say hello. Yes. And we can walk you through any of these. Carol had a great well. point too. Uh, if you are just trying, she's marking most of the time, either using a ruler as a right. guide, using uh, your stencils or something, because otherwise it can look a little jerky yes. or like, uh, or unplanned, right? It can look like they were just kind of going willy nilly. Right. Okay. So I'm going to follow up with a few more things here, but we're running real close to our time. <laughs> A lot of information. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask these questions now as I go through some other stuff. Um, right. Yeah, please ask questions. It's ask all away. okay to do that. Um, but do remember Monday is our flash sale as it is every Monday mm -hmm. on our website, warmandcozyquilting.com. Yes. Go to the shop area. And you guys want to know what's on sale this week? Some fabric for a good deal. What is it this week? Uh, it's going to be kids fabric. Ooh, because the kids are all going back to school. So now you got to make them something. Right. Yay. There, back to school quilts. There's back to school quilts. There's um, quarantine baby quilts. There's going to be <laughs> quarantine baby quilts that have probably been needing to be made if they haven't been made already. Right. So yeah, that's a thing. So yeah. So look, go in and find in some cute. I mean, there's lots of cool stuff that's going to be on. Lots Monday. of lots of kids stuff on sale. And Check I'm going to put out. some blenders and some fun of stuff. Of course with she it. is. Why wouldn't she? <laughs> Uh, so check that out on Monday. Starts at 9 a.m., ends at midnight on Central Time. Correct. Central here in the, you know, Columbia, Illinois area. Uh, then we have Wednesday sale. Mm -hmm. You want to know what's going to be on Wednesday? Yeah, we don't know either, but we do. Yeah. But you have to come in on Wednesday. <laughs> Wild and find Wednesday, out. 5 p.m. here, Central Time. Yes. We will show you all kinds of cool new stuff and usually give you a good price. Usually so does. you want to come back and see us on Wednesday at 5 here on Facebook. Right. If you're watching us on YouTube, I'm sorry we don't do those live on YouTube because we just can't. So if you want to watch us, you have to come to Facebook Wednesdays to see it. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this now on Facebook and you're like, YouTube? Yeah, yeah. we have a YouTube channel. Yeah. It's YouTube.com slash Warm and Cozy Quilting. We have a channel. Thanks for new subscribers. We've gotten some new people. Yeah. It's been wonderful. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go do that. Yeah. It's fun. Uh, also, you can see a lot of these things that we've done that we, you know. Right. If you, especially stuff, right? like, okay, so if you've just bought a stripology ruler. Oh, yeah. And you were like, I think they did a demo. Sometimes I, I feel like it's a little bit challenging to find the older videos on Facebook. It's much easier on YouTube. Yeah. So go to YouTube. Check it They're out. there. Uh, stash Pot Pie, which you see in front of you is September's Stash Pot Pie. So if you finish August, which isn't here anymore, it's across the street, this is what you're looking at. How beautiful is that? You got till September 4th to finish your August SPPs. Do it. Um, if you have questions about August SPP, please send me a message um, or come by the shop. I'll gladly help you. Okay. Well, that's cool. I don't really have anything else. Um, Announcement wise, um, oh, wait, mm, no, maybe. <laughs> I don't know what just happened in his brain. I short circuited. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, we can't wait for it either, Peggy. I look forward to the end of the month when people have their oh, stuff this done. Oh, this is so a I good time. Yeah, Car if you're, if you're nice. unsure if uh, doing Stash Pot Pie is for you, first of all, it's just a $10 pattern. Yep. Second of all, you. Uh, join the Qu the Quilters Collective, and you can see those pat the same pattern. Everybody got the same pattern, and you'll see thirty different ones. Different colorways. So, oh, I need to, Oh layouts. my gosh, I do need to make a quilt for so and so, and she asked for uh, blue and yellow, and I just kept thinking, I don't know how I'm gonna put blue and yellow together, but look at this quilt in blue and yellow. It's bound to happen. Anyway, sorry, I have this whole conversation in my head. That was a fun conversation. Yeah. I kind of felt like I was there. I'm glad you guys got to join today. <laughs> oh, oh, I forgot oh. totally. Can uh -oh. I just tell them one more thing? Okay, yeah. Okay, so I hope you didn't dry, leave yet. So, here we so are. dry erase markers are good, but guess what? They come off, right? Oh, um, back to the preview paper. Okay, yes. yeah, back to the preview paper. So, uh, a wet erase marker. You're like wet erase? I've never even heard of that. It's still an expo marker. You're going to find it in the same area that you would find your stationary supplies, right? 
uh, but you buy wet erase and then it has to get wet for it to come off. So you design something out. Oh my gosh, I have to leave and go somewhere and I've got to clean up this area. You can roll it up onto your, you know, so you don't have to, anyway. And then it's not going to come off on something else. It'll right. still be there. You can then um, come back to it. Wet erase is my favorite. Nice. Oh my gosh, Bella Herman. She's going to give people a good way to make the block for the August SPP if you take that oh. class. Oh. That doesn't give them a whole lot of time. It gives you a week after that class to get it done. But if you only got a week and she's got a better I bet, for you. I bet this uh, September one is going to be easier with that technique too. I bet you're probably right. So, Bella's class. Square and square. Especially Land these four. little half square triangles, right? Hey, don't be giving it away. Okay, okay. Sorry. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, with that, you got anything else you want to give to the folks information-wise? I think we're good. Yeah. Don't forget to go watch the Jaff Tax shop tour if you haven't done it yet. Watch it again and again and again. And then share it. <laughs> and have your friends watch it. We're going to go open the store. Come by and see us. 11 to 4. We'll see you soon. Bye.